Detroit is the greatest! Straight up light you on fire for a Coney dog right now. Darren McCarty comes back to Neyland in front of him. McCarty draws. McCarty in. McCarty! Scott! He made the double to go! Motor City Sports Rant, DetroitSportsPodcast.com. I'm Benny Stubbs. Sitting across from me is the doc, John Macaroon. John. Vinay, what's going on, my friend? I'm excited to do this podcast with you, my friend. What's, what's going on? Word, buddy. You came in this morning. You said, hey, you called me up. You said, Doc, I got to be an hour late. Yes, absolutely. You had a rough Friday night. Tell, oh, my goodness Tell the world what the hell you're doing. I went downtown Detroit. I went to downtown Detroit. I went to uh, the Firebird Tavern, and I drank about 12 beers and took like three shots, and I was in complete shambles this morning. Uh, last night, I urinated all over the floor, and my roommate is currently putting a bathtub together in the basement so he's putting concrete down i stepped in it last night and my uh footprints are all over the place and he's really pissed off so sorry for getting so intoxicated but i have no choice because it was friday and that's what i do you had a fun night with your girlfriend and you guys are back on yes uh oh my god you really want to get into this i want to know what's going on first of all you were you you had said that it was going to be a long time before you got back with her but I You're not up, back. We went f- five days. Uh, five days I, away from each other. I reached out again. Uh, what are the odds? So, yeah, we went. To, I texted her. We squashed our thing, whatever, yada, yada, yada. So we went downtown, and her and her friends spent like three hours getting ready to go downtown. They couldn't find a spot to park. And I don't know why they spent all that time getting ready to go out when all they do is sit together in a huddle and bitch about everything. It's all they do is bitch. And it used to be really cute. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, it's funny. But it takes its toll on you, and I'm just sitting there with it, like anxiety. I'm like, oh, my God, shut up. I'm losing my mind. What kind of things were they complaining about? Uh, you name it. This person over here, look at this guy. Oh, my God, what a dickhead. Look at this guy. Oh, my God, LOL. And I'm just sitting there like, are you serious? Oh, my God, who cares? Let me drink in peace. Let me be depressed because of Brad Osmus. So your evening consists of you hanging out with all the girls. Yeah, and they <laughs> bitch about everything, and all I do is I look at the screen, and I watch the Tigers lose every night, and I'm sick and tired of it. I cannot believe we're two games under 500. It is, it's disgusting. It's the sickest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, we, we have a lot of time to talk about bad news. We've got to talk about other things. Because What's I told, good? I, well, no, is there good news in Detroit right now? I told the audience that I was going to work on fixing you and fixing your problems. I want you to feel better. I want the radio hosts around town to treat you nicer and not to call you out. I want them to tie in Vinny Stubbs with positivity and hope and not uh, mental illness. Oh, and, good luck. <laughs> so the reason why I've decided to try and help you, I am a psychologist, I feel like, you know, we've, we've had you on the podcast. You're doing a great job for the Motor City Sports Rant. But when Darren McCarty goes on 105.1 FM, I want him to say, Vinny Stubbs, what a great sportscaster. What a great radio personality. But now I, I get tweets and texts that come to me, and it says, Darren McCarty says that Vinny Stubbs is not all there mentally. And it, it breaks my heart. I don't want to hear that for you, Vinny. What, I think he was just kidding around. First of all, we break each other's balls all day long. That's all that was. He was just joking around, I think. I'm not all there, but neither is he, so I don't care. So you're an intern. You were an intern at 105.1. You, you meet him for the first time. What was that like? Darren McCarty, the first time I ever met him, it's very uh, intimidating. So I was, uh, was very nervous, but I like to break the ice of people immediately. And how I do that is I act really, really ridiculous. So I wrote a note, and it says, Darren McCarty likes dudes. And I taped it to the door of the radio station of the uh, studio. So when he walked in and opened the door, he seen that. And he looked at me, he turned around in his Canadian accent. And I was like, was that Jewel? I was like, yeah, you betcha. And ever since we became uh, good friends. He's a good person. I really like that guy. And I wish him the best. Okay. I haven't talked to him in a long time since the uh, NFL draft. But he's got problems with his girlfriend, too. I think that's why he really likes me. Because I'm always on the radio going, oh, my God, Aaron. Oh, my God. So you and think and he, he laughs at me. But when we went to the NFL draft, his girlfriend was giving him some guff as well. So we relate in that uh, aspect. 
you think he sympathizes with you in your plight with your current girlfriend? Sure, absolutely. Okay, so how do we keep you and your girlfriend together all, um, all for, uh, let's say, three weeks, three to four weeks in a row? Well, first of all, we start by firing Brad Osmus. <laughs> no, I don't know. I just, you know what it is? I got to let her do whatever she wants, and I can't do anything. I'm in checkmate. It sucks. I feel like I'm in uh, restraint, and I can't do anything. She can do whatever she wants, and I can't do anything about it, and I'm in shambles. What are you going to do? You can act like a man! Like a man would do! This how you turn that up. That cries like a woman. <laughs> what can I do? What can I do? My man, we got to get you out of being in shambles. That's what I'm saying. I'm here to help you. What do you need help with the most? What two things would, would uh, what could I do to help you become the person that you need to be? What are you talking about? You got to be happier. I want you to be, you know, more confident. I want you to walk in here and be like, bam, me and my girlfriend are great. Dude, I am happy. I'm confident. What are you? What the hell are you talking about? You look sad to me. I look sad. I look hungover. I didn't <laughs> take a shower. I almost came in here free balling, but I uh, put some boxers on at the last second. See, and the Tigers, must be the Tigers, the way they play. Watching them is really tough. I, I've got honest. Justin Verlander versus Rick Porcello. I, di- I didn't tune in, and I didn't. I knew. And I heard it was a great pitching performance. The Tigers still lost in extra innings. It was disappointing, but hey, JV pitched better. Seems like whoever wanted to lose more won. So yeah, that, that's that's what I took out of it. And the fan base is basically whenever there's a win, they're a little bit overexcited. Whenever there's a loss, they're very hostile. They're looking at Brad Osmith with an evil eye, and I think the Tigers fans are now over it. They're very angry. They're very upset with what's been going on, and I don't blame them. The Tigers right now are a team that is below 500. <laughs> you believe that? No, just, I cannot believe that. It's shocking. Um, listen, their pitching is terrible. It is terrible. Berlander is 0-7. He gave up one run last night with seven hits, three Ks, and over eight innings. That was his best performance since the Twins game. He's very inconsistent, but when he's on, he's on. I, the, the Red Sox suck. But whatever. Uh, they're five games back. Everybody in every our starters, with the exception of David Price, who they're about to trade, they're getting rid of his ass, uh, has an ERA over four. It's disgusting. Uh, what the hell is going on? How are they two games under 500? Their, their offense is insane. You know what? When you look at it, the team as constructed as a whole is not uh, is not that good. It's Brad Osmus. They don't want to no, play for him. No, no. I'm telling you, they don't want to play for him. He's a pussy. Okay, there's one, there's one aspect. The team may have kind of started to mail it in. They are competing still. They are, you know, um, coming back in games that they lose. They don't look like a team that is not giving effort. But what you see is a team that cannot collectively put it all together. When you have good pitching, Justin Verlander, Pitched very well. Mixed his pitches up. He had a great performance. He looked like the JV of old, as as everyone's been wanting to see. And then the hitting goes away. And then then what happens is, when you're in a tight game, that's when the manager is very key. And you had a situation where, in extra innings, you have Bogarts up. And he is lighting everybody up. He's pitching well. You don't walk him. You know, you don't walk him to get to Sandoval, who struggles against left-handed pitching and, Har- and, oh, you and Hardy. Wa- you did watch the game. I watched the end, of course. I got home about, uh, you know, whatever. The game went long, too. Look at you. Got home at 11 o'clock, and Hardy gave up the uh, game running run. What are you going to do? And, of course, Brad Osmus has to go to the phone, which why, if, if the game is over, if you're wrong, just, <laughs> just challenge it. So when you look at the Tigers and everything as a whole, it's just disappointing. And we can keep talking about it, but... I do want to ask you, do you blame now Dombrowski more for this, for the collection of talent no. that Brad Osmus has to work with? No. Or do you blame Osmus and the fact that in-game managing is a weakness, he's regressed, and he's not a good manager? It's, and he's man- not- it's managing. It's managing. Top the bottom. It's managing. There's no doubt about it. Okay, so then you 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 notice that Brad Osmus doesn't know how to use the he ball pen effectively. starters in too long. Doesn't know how to use the, the starters. And when he brings the guys in from the bullpen, they're already garbage. And their confidence is rocked when they bring them in when they leave their starters in too long, and there's two guys on. What are you going to do? Right. And, every- and that rocks their confidence. They're rattled. They're out there. There's two guys on. You leave your starter in too long, and then they give up two runs. When is I've never, this season, I have not seen any reliever go one, two, three. I have not seen it. I'm mm-hmm. not kidding you. Rondon did last I, night. I don't Rond- care. We're not talking about Bruce Rondon. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to let Blaine you know. Blaine Hardy. I, yeah, I know. The, the talent, I know everyone in town loves them, some Alex Wilson, and everybody wants to just overuse them. But you're right. You are absolutely right. Brad Osmus has struggled. And that's why I'm upset when you look at it further. What is Gene Lamont doing? What is he talking to him about? Is he just sitting there eating? Cashing checks and not doing anything? I don't know. What, they're both what, picking yeah. their, their ass in the dugout. And it doesn't make any sense. Brad Osmus was a major league player. Omar Vizquel is on the staff. Gene Lamont 
a former major league manager. What are these guys doing? What are they teaching them? They're scratching their balls in the dugout, not it, doing anything. And it, Brad Ausmus is very confident. Well, who the hell does he think he is? You see him at the, the on the on the podium? Yeah, he, the pre, uh, the post game comment. What? You better start getting pissed off. Your ass is gonna get fired, buddy. He did. He did. Did you hear the comment? No, I didn't hear okay, it. Okay, what was your reaction when you heard? He said, um, he came out, um, I believe, and said. You know what? I when I go to the ballpen and bring out a reliever, there's no Mariano Rivera in the oh, ballpen. Oh, I heard, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he actually starting now to defend himself because it's, it's over. It is over. He's he's gonna get fired. It's too most of us. You don't do that. Yeah, most of us wanted to see this back in April. Where was it? Come on, Brad. And this team is starting to it, to fall apart. You know what's interesting? What's going on now? They you got, suck. You That's got very the, interesting. You got the players tweeting during games. Did you hear? Um, did you read the oh tweets God, from David falling, Price? It's falling apart. To Lynn Henning. What? So Lynn Henning tweets, he doesn't tag David Price, but he tweets about David Price being selfish, that he walked off the mound without giving the ball to Brad Ausmus, and that he should be traded immediately. So He is going to get traded immediately. So David Price gets wind of this and tweets back, like, excuse me, are you even at the series versus Boston? Are you taking another series off? Do you want me to strong arm you? Because I will. And he basically blasted Lynn Henning and said... If you don't uh, watch what you're saying, I'm going to pretty much go to your employer and get you out of this locker room. Good. Who the hell's Len, Len Henning? <laughs> his name? You don't know Len your history. Henning? He is a reporter for the Detroit News. I know News. who he is, Jerk No, off. you don't. Yes, I do know who he is. Okay. I read his pieces all the time. Who does he think he is? I know. First of all, David Price is a monster. The guy's ER, what, what, what's his ERA? Let's, uh, 2.31. He's the only guy that's doing anything in that rotation besides Sanchez. He's getting his act together. His ERA is starting to dwindle, and I'm very happy. But... They're two games under 500, so I'm pissed off. Uh, David Price can do whatever the hell he wants, first of all. He's the face of the franchise on the pitching staff. So uh, you you come to the Tigers, and you you be an ace. You kick ass, and you be two games under 500 and have Brad Austin be your manager. Uh, I wouldn't hand him. I would, put my, I would pull my pants down and personally hand him my balls, okay? <laughs> so I'm with David Price on this, and he's going to get traded no matter what he says. He says that he, uh, he wants to win in Detroit, but whatever. And then I read an article that... Uh, where did I read that article at? Uh, the Free Press, Steve Schrader. Uh, Price won't be back with the Tigers traded or not, according to Ken Rosenthal. I don't know how he knows that, but I guess the contract Price uh, will command is beyond the Tigers' comfort level. So there you go. There you have it. Uh, they're going to be sellers. And if they're not sellers, they're going to be buyers. You're either going to get Dan Heron from the Marlins, which he's 34 years old, or this uh, James Shields character from the Padres. And he pitched for the uh, the Rays and the Royals and Andrew Kashner. Uh, Shields is 8-3 with an ERA of 3.77, and he struggles with walks. And he's owed $21 million next year and $21 million the year after that. You can't afford that. No. Uh, so what you got to do is sell, and it's over. Okay, so There's now, no World Series run, and this team is going to be uh, now. Now, do, do you have confidence that if they no, do sell? No, I don't have confidence in anything. No. What, they're going to make a run? No, that, that if, they, if they sell, that they'll bring in pieces to help this team for the future, in the future to rebuild. No, because Dombrowski's walking out the door, and you got Brad Ausmus. Are they going to fire him? Is Dave Dombrowski going to resign here? It's over. It's starting. To, it, it's it's falling apart. It all started with uh, Doug Fister. This organization has kind of decided, and you're right, that it's time to take a step back, look at the payroll, look at the players, look at the management. We never won a and, World Series, man. We didn't I win can't it. believe it. You're mad, huh? Damn it. It's it sucks. Absolutely sucks. And it, and everyone should be mad. But I do think that it's time to kind of you know put that aside and think how do you rebuild this team? And because you got a lot of older players making a lot of money, but so that's why I'm now. Uh, taking away the anger a little bit, I am disappointed, yes, that we made this run and didn't win a World Series. We didn't cash in. But if you have all these pieces, Kinsler, David Price, Ioannis Cespedes, oh my God. you can move those pieces, get some guys they're in here. Move those they can guys. Help. They're gonna, but, Vinny, you can go out and still get a Cespedes in free agency. So you can get something for them, move them out for a couple months, and next season retool. <sighs> You, you're going to have to do that. And if I know, they're buyers and they continue to be under They're not going to be buyers. No, they're not. They're, they're, struggling. I know. they're struggling versus Boston and Seattle. a little bit here. They're struggling versus Boston and Seattle. They're not going to be buyers. I That'd know. be stupid. I know. And it's, it's frustrating, yes. But you got to now start looking at, uh, sorry, Vinny, you got to start looking at the rebuild. The rebuild? It's time to rebuild. It's over, man. And their farm system's garbage. Dombrowski's walking out the door. He's going to go work for the MLB with Joe Torre. It's over. It's over. Who are you going to bring in? El Avila? Oh, next. I, I I don't know what to say anymore. It's over. They ne- they never won a World Series. It's frustrating. Uh, unbelievable, man. I, 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 are you still, how are you long still, are we going to wait now until they rebuild that? What, what? Are you still willing to to tune in to watch the Tigers, even though to see what, what kind of struggle they're going to watch? Okay. XNXX. Yeah, I will. But when I'm done, what else am I going to watch? The Tigers. Going forward, 
they are going to need to add to this team and rebuild, rebuild the minor leagues and do some things to help this ball club. Oh my God. What, what, what can I say? What can I say here? What can you say? You can say you have hope that they will make the moves and, and decide. I think it's time to decide to pull the trigger because here's what's going on. They're taking their, they're taking their sweet-ass time. Scott Kazmir is already off the market. What are you waiting for? Pull the trigger. Teams are already starting to make their moves. They're waiting until the Red Sox series is over. It, it, it's a terrible decision, right? They should be on the forefront of making these moves because— They're scared. Yeah, if you wait, if you wait— Everyone else has pieces to add, and you're if you're going to be on the um, on the defense instead of being proactive. They should think about moving Cespedes, moving Price. The problem is, is they don't want to admit it's over, and they don't want to sell, and they're mm-hmm. they're waiting for the very last second. You believe? So. Yeah, you believe that they are basically they're, they grasping can't, they can't at straws. Believe yeah. it either. They can't believe it. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, Brad Osmus. Thank yeah, you. They're grasping at straws. It's unbelievable. It's it truly is unbelievable that this team is two games under 500. Oh, I can't as believe it. Is, isn't it crazy? Yeah, it's really crazy. It, it's it's insane. The worst part is you have David Price and Verlander pitching back-to-back, and you don't get wins. Yeah, you got Shane Green, too. And it's it's unbelievable. Where If you don't win <laughs> when Price, Verlander pitches, it, Sanchez has kind of rebounded nicely, has, yeah. has had some good pitching performances, but Green and Simon, look out. Um, Sunday night, Green's going to pitch nationally televised game versus Boston, 8 p.m., ESPN. It's going to be embarrassment. What? Yeah, Sunday night. Wow, that's more embarrassing than watching the Lions on NBC. <laughs> that's pretty bad. It's going to be bad. There's there's two guys in the lineup, and Cabrera's not even in the lineup, that mm-hmm. are batting over 300. So Mc- the only guy batting over 300 is Iglesias, 324. Miguel Cabrera's blasting reporters on Twitter. Is he? Yeah. It's it's one of those things where, what do you think about athletes on Twitter? I never asked you about that. Athletes have a forum I to gotta talk to. i got to be completely honest with you. I don't scroll through my news feed on Twitter. Those guys need to shut the hell up, though. Seriously. I, I, I don't care. I really don't care. It's your opinion. Say whatever the hell you want. I don't care. I go on Twitter to put things that are offensive on there, so I don't really care. I don't, I, I, what am I going to do? Scroll through my newsfeed all day long on Twitter? I wonder what David Price is doing. Currently picking my ass in the dugout. <laughs> Dude, I'm so pissed off at Brad Osmus. I, I, listen, I don't give a damn about Twitter. You don't give a damn. So you I say don't. I you don't say, care about Twitter. You say if you have the forum, use it. You're not. You don't really get their information. So you hear it from me. Yeah, I'm the one that's on there uh, scrolling through the yeah, newsfeed. I, I don't know how you have time. I don't have time. I work ten hours a day at least. Okay, so you, you give I'm the, not going on Twitter. You give the athletes a pass. You don't really care. No, I don't give a damn. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so then, okay. I think they need to be... Okay, you're mad at Brad Osmus, and when you talk and you look at what's going on around him, people are kind of saying he's safe, which doesn't really make sense to me because if Dave Dombrowski's gone, then a new general manager, if it's going to be Avila, um, the current assistant general manager, Avila, then maybe Osmus is going to be safe and they trust him, but I don't believe that you can sit here and say that Osmus is safe. He's a bad manager. Yeah, his man- his managing skills have regressed. It's unbelievable. It's completely unbelievable. But the same- and at the same time, the pitchers, the the hitting goes away at inopportune times. It's just one of those things where I think a new I think if you really wanted to salvage this season, you would move Osmus after the Boston series. No, you can't fire him right now, can you? Yeah, why not? What's to say? I know they're not oh, going to do I, it. I, honest to God, I'd be happy. They I, I don't think do anybody it. ever deserves to lose, lose their job. No. I'm not this guy here. deserves to lose, it, lose his job. You he have really to. Does. You have to because... There's way too much talent on here. Yeah, he needed to take a bench coaching job. The inexperience is showing, and it's very disappointing. I agree. At the beginning of the year, I, I, I predicted them to go 500, right? Yes, you did. Uh, I took a shot in the dark. I didn't want them to go 500. I wanted them to go, get into the playoffs. But with that bullpen as it's constructed, I, I knew it was a disaster. And I didn't know anything about Green or Simon. And then Green's first two starts, holy hell, look what we got. We struck gold. Dombrowski's a genius. He's not a genius. <laughs> it's over. Whatever. What are you going to do? They're two games under 500. Okay, so last, l- last week, Kinsler throws a bat and gets ejected. Don't you think that maybe a message should have been sent and he should have been sat down for a game or two? No. By the manager? No. You, you, hell you no. With him? No, he wants to win. I'd break a bat, too. That w- I like that. That was Bushley. It shows that he cares. That was Bushley. Dude, the team's falling apart, and they're too talented to be, be falling apart like that. So what are you going to do? I, oh. I would break a. I would break a bat too. No, I, I don't. I don't I, if you're mad, if you're mad at an umpire, you know what? You get to you go to the dugout, blow off steam there. You don't intentionally throw a bat back at the umpire. Were you because really you got, think he got, that was towards the umpire? Yes, he was. It was. It was, it was definitely. He intended. got ejected for it, dude. Uh, he got ejected. That was a bad move. Everyone's frustrated, John. 
Everyone's pissed off. And that's where Adam and I have talked about on our podcast, who's the leader on this team? Who's the guy that's going to rally everybody? I don't, I don't Nobody. No, no one. There's no one there. A guy like Kinsler's making $16 million. You can't be flinging your bat and getting ejected from games every single every single game he needs to be there. They're so bad. And you can start. I see why when he was having a hot streak and he was playing well, people were saying, well, why did Texas give up on him? He's a $16 million a year player, and he's, his numbers don't justify it. He's great. He's, he's great. a good infielder. He's a good infielder, but his, his average is going up, too. He's just, he has no power. His numbers, I don't see it. His okay, numbers if, are garbage. If, some rumors are swirling that maybe the Yankees may come calling for him. Go. Make the move. Ya. Yeah, put Romine in the spot. I don't care. So basically, besides J.D. Martinez and McCann and uh, Iglesias, really, just, there's no untouchables for you. No. Not, no, it's over. It's, a, it's done. Uh, I said... Four weeks ago, they're going to trade Cespedes, mm-hmm. and that they're going to trade Cespedes. They're going to yep. trade Price, and if you could, if let's, if you could trade Victor Martinez, trade him, trade him. Yeah. All right, let's take a break. Yeah, let's, please, let's take a break because yeah. I don't want to talk about the Tigers anymore. Yeah, that's not. I, talk I really about, don't. It's really I'm sad. so pissed off. Yeah, Motor City Sports Rant, DetroitSportsPodcast.com. All right, Doc here for DetroitSportsPodcast.com. Check out our website to support the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Detroit sportspodcast.com it's the place you go to for tickets great online deals 24 7 you can go click through the banner links if you shop at amazon click through the amazon banner at detroit sportspodcast.com and when you make a purchase through amazon they kick us back a little something and it allows us to continue to provide two great weekly shows some special interviews from time to time we are adding two more shows a detroit tigers podcast and a fantasy football podcast Help us continue to provide podcasts for the Detroit Sports Podcast Network by visiting our website, DetroitSportsPodcast.com. Motor City Sports Rant, DetroitSportsPodcast.com. John. Yes, sir, Vinny. I was... um... Get my car fixed, and I got. I knew I had to sit for a couple hours. Is that your car right there? No, that's not my car. Oh, that's uh, a okay. that that is the wife's car out there. Oh, wow. yep, and that's the car actually that I got fixed. It's a Mercedes um, two forty SX or something like oh, that. Look at you, yes sir. Aren't you lengthy? Yeah, and uh, so I knew I had a couple hours to fix the brakes. Mm-hmm. So I picked up a NFL. Oh, magazine. you know how to fix brakes? No, I took it to Bell Tire. Oh my God, Bell yeah. Tire. That's your first mistake. Mm-hmm. Took it to Bell Tire to get it fixed, and picked up an NFL magazine. And guess who's on the cover? Smack dab. Who? Matt Stafford. Matthew Stafford on the cover. All right. And uh, it was a decent preview magazine. It's got a lot of information about every single team, their ups, the downs, the issues going on with them. And it was a very, very interesting read. And uh, with the lines, they basically talked about um, a couple things with Stafford. And here's what they said. They said that last year, Lombardi, Caldwell definitely tried to rein in Stafford, but that Stafford became overly conservative. They didn't tell him to not take chances. They told him to just kind of watch the turnovers, um, be careful with the football. And they said that in the magazine that um, it's called Athlon Sports Pro Football Preview. It said that Stafford will be will be encouraged this year to throw the ball more downfield and to take more chances. That the, the coaching staff just kind of told him, "Hey, you can still throw the ball downfield. Just be careful and pick and choose your spots." And then he he took it to a a whole nother level. Right. So this year. Last year, he only he reduced his interceptions from um, 19 two years ago to 12 last year. This year, do you think he's going to have more or less than 12 interceptions? More. Yeah, I think so too. I think that he's going to be a little bit more of a gunslinger. He's going to take more chances. You got confidence that he's going to be effective doing that? No, I don't. You don't want him taking more chances. I think this is the best offensive line on paper that I've seen so far for the Detroit Lions, and I'm 26 years old, and that's the best quarterback they ever had. I like Matt Stafford. He's very inconsistent. So for this year, I think he's going to throw 22 touchdowns again, 23, 25 in that range, and I think he's going to throw 20 interceptions. You think he's going to throw more interceptions? Yes, I do. So that's a, that's an issue. That's yes. a big issue it's, because yes, issue. you're saying that he can't take more chances without turning the ball over more. Correct. And that's a big problem then with your number I, one quarterback. I think will look good starting off at the beginning of the year, but you got seven, uh, you got seven uh, nationally televised games, and every time the Lions are on uh, national television, they look lethargic, just terrible. And they got seven of those. And they got Amir Abdullah. Hopefully the guy pans out. It's the best O-line I've seen on paper. The guy's a fumbling machine. So what are you going to do? I, I see Stafford in games that are on the line. He could either come back and win them like he did last year. He won, came back four times, I think. Or he could throw interceptions. And I think he's going to throw interceptions. Every time they have a, a, a double-digit winning uh, season the next year, garbage. So get off your phone and uh, talk to me. Listen, 
I'm kind of surprised that Stafford was told last year to kind of rein it in. Yes, he is a gunslinger. Yes, he is a, a person that uh, he has the mentality like a Brett Favre to take chances. But I think this year, I think it's going to be important for them to actually be more conservative, not to throw the ball more. You have drafted an offensive line to get more balance. So what they're saying is, what the coaching staff is saying to Stafford basically is, listen, you could take a chance only if you're going to be successful, if Calvin Johnson's wide open, if Golden Tate's wide open, and things like that. If Eric Ebron's wide open and drops the ball. <laughs> so it's, it's one of those things where I personally would say, in my opinion, run the ball more, be a little bit more conservative, and take the chances when it's the defense shows up. I honestly don't give a damn as long as they go 11-5 and five again because that was really cool. And please win a playoff game, uh, but I don't see them going to the playoffs. And then, and then this week, a lot of talk has been about Stafford's ranking. One, and, oh, and we, 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 we talked about it last, last time. week. Was it yeah. that Vinny uh, Iyer guy? Yes. Oh my ra- god, ranked low. But now this magazine has him uh, number eleven. That's so, too high. That's still too high. Yeah. So, and, and most people are thinking Stafford ranks right there in the middle between and like the, ten and fifteen. Yeah. Okay. So then I want to ask you this: If you're a big fan of the Eagles. If the Eagles yeah. had a chance to get Stafford, you'd want him quarterback in your team? Yes. You'd take Hell, Stafford all day? Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. You know how good Matt Stafford is? Vinny, These listen, guys don't uh, fall off trees, buddy. Oh, okay. He's very inconsistent. Yeah, but the guy is a very good quarterback. Okay. His arm is sickening, but he's very inconsistent. Uh, if he's a very good quarterback, why did the coaches rein him in last year? Because he turns the ball over too much. How is he a good quarterback then? He's a good quarterback. I just said he's inconsistent. Sometimes he looks great. Sometimes he looks terrible. What do you want from me? He's an inconsistent quarterback. Okay. That's what you're going to get out of him. What What do you see in Matt Stafford? I don't know, dude. He's been here a decade. You tell me. What is he going to do this year? He's going to be very inconsistent. He's going to look good at times, and he's going to look really bad at times. It doesn't help when you have two tight ends that suck. One guy can't catch. One guy can't block or catch. Okay? Uh, oh, so you're saying some of the factors that the reason why he's inconsistent is that the talent is not good. When he's on, the guys are dropping balls, fumbling, and when he's off, forget about it. Just go 11-5 and five again. I don't see you going 11-5 and five again. you got a really hard schedule. But I, th- I think Matt Stafford's, I don't know, man, because he's been here for, what, eight years? Uh, this I think he's going to be in he his seventh season. He hasn't won a playoff game yet. Mm-hmm. John, that's a big deal. Okay, Adders, Adam. You don't need a, a decade. Adam Zimmerman on Twitter says, of course, we no problem him, with him throwing more. Every quarterback makes mistakes, but Stafford is constantly running for his life. Can't make a throw from your back. I understand that, especially on the road. That's a good point. Yeah, so you, you think the offensive line will give him more time? And I don't that- know because on paper it looks good, but what the hell do I know? It could be really good. I think they're gonna have they're gonna flourish in the first half of the season and dwindle in the second half. That's my honest. I think they're gonna go eight and eight. I really do. They got okay. a hard schedule. I I like Matt Stafford. First of all, he was drafted by the Lions. If he was on the Eagles, he would already won a playoff game. Sorry, the Lions on paper they're way better than the Eagles, but for some weird reason, the Eagles go to the playoffs and they win the game or two. And they suck, too. <laughs> I hate the Eagles right now. I love the Lions, man. I want them to do good. I really do. But what are you, you going to do? Just win. That's all you got to do. I'm sick and tired of hearing it. Yeah, they, I, I'm th- I think they're poised to have a good season. I don't because Sue's gone, and he makes a huge impact. What, you got eight and a half sacks? You replace him with Haloti Nottis from a 3-4 defense, and Tyron Walker had a sack last year? The pressure is going to be cut in half. And that means the linebackers get exposed, and the secondary gets exposed. You mm-hmm. understand? So maybe Darius Slay is not as good as we think he is. Maybe he's not a lockdown corner. We'll see. So you're not because now the quarterback's going to have more time to get rid of the ball. You don't believe the defense under defensive coordinator Terrell Austin is going to continue to ha- to pressure the quarterback, make make good plays. Yeah, and- I do, but not as crazy as last year because right. Sue was in a contract year, mm-hmm. and I I didn't even know who Terrell Austin was. So hopefully the guy's the truth. I, I I don't know what the hell do I know? Look at me, John. What the hell do I know? You know what you know? You know football. I know football. So here's, here's I got them going eight and eight. Here's it is. So here's. Um, the theme throughout the podcast of me helping you. You need to. I'm form, helping you. You need to form an opinion and stick with it. You know, I a said lot. they're going eight and eight. Matt Stafford's okay. inconsistent, and the def- the defense okay. is going to struggle. So that's the best offensive yes. line I've seen on paper. So then, when I ask you, you would take inconsistent on the team that you're most passionate about, the Eagles. You would take that. I think Matt. No, St- our, you, the your Eagles' answer offensive be- line is better than the Lions' offensive line. You, I personally think so in the last two years. So you're saying then if Stafford were on the Eagles, he wouldn't be I'm saying I would take Matt Stafford over Sam Bradford. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Look at Sam Bradford. Mm-hmm. Sam Bradford's got a good arm. It's just as strong as Stafford's. But that guy, he is a China doll. So what I'm saying is... Yeah, I would take point, Stafford over Bradford. You wouldn't? No. What? I'm saying... I quit. No, I'm saying that Matthew Stafford, as a quarterback, needs to show it this year what he's got. He's, number one, he's a number one quarterback, and he's inconsistent. 
as a number one drafted overall quarterback, you should be having playoff wins. You shouldn't be in, inconsistent. Uh, no, you kidding. shouldn't having your coaches rein you in. You shouldn't be uh, kind of having the offensive line basically loaded up for you. You should be able to kind of handle this it. This is it. This is the year. This is the year. Uh, this is the last year I'm giving Stafford. Yeah. And it sucks because I don't know who the hell they're going to replace him with. So This is his last year to win a playoff game. I'm getting so pissed off at him. All right, tell win me, a playoff game, dude. Tell me a little about this MLive story from Abdullah that you uh, kind of were uh, talking about in the meeting. Um, Let me see. Yeah, I read this uh, this piece. It was on MLive. I believe the gentleman's name was hmm, Justin Rogers. He said that the rookie round uh, – he said rookie could round out potentially dynamic running back rotation, and I put LOL to that. Today we hit on the running backs. Uh, Drake Bell, Amir Abdullah, Theo Riddick, blah, 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 blah. The breakdown. Despite an announced intention to be more balanced offense in 2014, the Detroit Lions continued to struggle. Running the ball consistently, the team finished the year ranked 29th in the league, averaging 3.6 yards per carry. That's insane, first of all. Detroit was hurt by the inability to break long runs. No kidding. Only two teams have fewer carries of 20 or more yards than the Lions. Six. The good news is projected starter Joyke Bell closed the year very strong. Not, not really. The veteran ranked up uh, 547 yards on the ground in the second half of the season, averaging a healthy 4.4 yards per carry. That's more like it. Due to nagging injuries to Reggie Bush, whatever, Detroit lacked a second reliable ball carry. Ugh. In addition to Abdullah, the Lions also drafted a fullback, snagging Rutgers, Michael Burton. I don't even know who the hell that guy is in the fifth round. Anyway, this guy blows off Amir Abdullah, saying that they're going to be a dynamic backfield, and this guy's the second coming of Jesus. Okay, He's so, a lion slappy Justin Rogers. So uh, the guy is a fumbling machine. You, you personally, looking at Amir Abdullah, are not a fan. Uh, yeah, I'm a fan. Uh, yeah, what, okay, he's a, he's a younger Reggie Bush. He still fumbles the ball a lot. That speaks volumes of Theo Riddick. And, and once again, Mark Mayhew, you can't draft. What do you got? What do you think about Amir Abdullah? I agree. He's going to be a question mark, but I like his upside. He's going to be a player that is going to get some chances to have success out of the screen game. He's going to be used probably exclusively on third down. He's, he, Joyk Bell is going to get the, the majority of the touches, and I think Abdullah is going to be given a chance to succeed. I think Theo Riddick and him can be a great option to get first downs and move the chains. And I, I'm just hoping that his career gets off to a consistent start and he's able to make plays. So I think they're I. giving the chance. They're going to give him the chance to make plays, and it's going to work out. Amir Abdullah in this offense is a good fit, and this is what we need to keep the chains moving, a guy that can be consistent and move the chains. And maybe he's a guy that will get catches out of the backfield and break some tackles and, uh, and in fumble the ball deceptive speed. Down. Deceptive speed, they say, right? Yeah, we'll see. Go 11-5 and five again and win a playoff game. You win a playoff game, and I'll get on the bandwagon. All right, let's check in a little bit about uh, some news and notes that were in this uh, magazine regarding the NFL. A couple preview topics that this magazine had was really interesting, and uh, we'll talk about it a little bit and get your opinion on some news and notes regarding the NFL. Mm. The first number one topic that people were talking about, the Seahawks recovery. Are they going to recover from the disastrous, most talked about, most analyzed play in Super Bowl history? Oh, dude. The gist of the point was Pete Carroll maybe lost his team that night. No because way. because Look at that you, division they play in. No, you don't, of course they're going to go to the playoffs. You don't. You don't have a play that's scrutinized that much, and Marshawn Lynch has a right to have a beef. You set up the organization, set up Russell Wilson to be the superstar when the right call was to have Marshawn Lynch take the ball, win the game, and Pete Carroll is going to have to kind of mend some fences and to really own up to the fact that he really blew a chance at an organization to win the second Super Bowl. Yeah, you think the Seahawks are going to have a good season this year? Yeah, they don't have anybody but the Cardinals threatening them. What else? They don't have a quarterback in Arizona. So Seattle's going to run the table again. San Francisco, they're garbage. The Buffalo, and we're not even going to talk about St. Louis. I mean, what are we talking about here? Of course. The Buffalo Bills were the last team to get the three Super Bowls in a row, 91 I don't want to talk about the Buffalo Bills. We're not going to go there. We're no, not talking no, about I'm the Buffalo No, I'm just saying the point is they were the last team to go to three Super Bowls in a row. You think Seattle can have to have that chance? They've added on now um, yeah, Jimmy do. Graham, Marshawn Lynch. They're going to run the crap out of him. Yeah, well, they lost some guys in the secondary. So I, I, yeah, of okay. course. Of course they do. Okay. I, of course. Yes, abso- absolutely. Seattle is a force to be reckoned with. Talking point, uh, J.J. Watt, the MVP. Oh, my God. He um, Last season, he had an unbelievable year. That was sickening. But he did not get the nod for MVP. Yeah, even though he got touchdowns, even though he was a sack machine, Finished with 20 and a half sacks. They won offense. Yeah, he, was the, he finished with 20 and a half sacks to become the first player with at least 20 sacks in two different seasons. He got... That's he, a lot of sacks. He's a dominant player. He's changing the game. That's more sacks than GGs. That's you think, ridiculous. You think he has an MVP quality season this year and actually can win the, the yeah, MVP award? Yeah. J.J. Watt, absolutely. I don't think he'll win an MVP. 
but I think I'll have another monster year. I don't know about 20 sacks. That's uh, that's out of control. Mm-hmm. Next question. All right. The team that I'm kind of watching is the Colts. Why? They've steadily made progress the last few seasons, and here's why. They went 11-5 and and lost in the wild card in 2012. They, they don't have... They went 11-5 and in 2013, won a wild card game. Sure. Took another step last year, going 11-5 and and sure. winning a, not only the wild card game, but getting to the AFC title game. Mm-hmm. They've added a lot of pieces to kind of go for it. They got Frank Gore, Andre Johnson, linebacker Trent Cole, lineman Todd uh, Harriman's. But they're a little bit older, but they've got Andrew Luck, a great quarterback. You think they take that next step to become a Super Bowl team? Uh, not as long as New England's relevant, no, because they don't have a defense. Uh, I don't care about any of those names you just threw at me. Those guys are fossils. So they need a defense, and it's plain and simple. And as long as you have the Patriots, uh, good luck. No pun intended. I disagree. I, once you have a young quarterback like Andrew Luck, he's a guy that you can tell is in the film room. He's a, he's a guy that is hungry. Um, the Colts are poised for a run, and I do think they're the, the up-and-coming team to beat. I would say preliminarily in the AFC, the Colts are my team to get to the Super Bowl as we speak now in this podcast. Colts. Uh, I'm not too sure about that. They are a very good team, but the Patriots are going back to the Super Bowl. Back to back? Yeah, I think so. Topic number four they had was uh, Cutler's last stand, question mark. New head coach, John Fox, is now Oof. there. They got a new general manager, and a lot of people are talking that Jay Cutler is a coach killer. Played for several coaches, and he's just not effective. In his nine-year career, his record is only 61-58 and 58, with only one playoff appearance and one victory. I mean, that's why a lot of people are saying... Matthew Stafford, we want him to be more like an Andrew Luck than a Jay Cutler. But is Jay Cutler a coach killer, and you think he'll have success this uh, year with John Fox? I want you to take a good look at me and take a deep breath. Jay Cutler is the biggest piece of garbage I've ever seen in my life. Every time he go, every time I go to the uh, Ford Field, they're playing the Lions, I, I heckle the hell out of him. He is a scumbag. Yes, he is a coach killer. That guy he play, Who's the guy he played for uh, after Lovey Smith? He just got fired. He just got shit-canned. What's his name? The Canadian guy. Tressman. Yeah, Mark Tressman. Wow. Yeah, he's a coach killer. And that guy was already killed before he even came to the Bears organization. $16.5 million cap hit this year. Yeah, dude, Jay Cutler is a scumbag. And they're probably going to go 6-10 and 10 this year. And John, and John Fox is... If John Fox had any balls whatsoever, if you gave him any lip, John Fox is a good head coach. He's went to the Super Bowl, the Panthers, and uh, the Denver Broncos. So he has, he's going to have an impact in Chicago. So the Lion fans, you should really be concerned. I want to get your opinion so, on So, no, Jay Cutler's a scumbag. He, he, they they got to get him off. Yeah, I want to get your opinion on this. It was a very interesting piece that was in this uh, magazine, and it talked about head coaches and their strong desire to want to have control of the organization. John you should. Yeah, okay, well, listen. John Fox took the team, took the Denver Broncos to the Super Bowl. They didn't have success in the three years he's, he was there with uh, Peyton Manning, but they noted that John Fox had disagreements with John Elway regarding the future of the team and how to get them to the next step. So, so John Fox has that great success, yet he gets moved, he gets moved on. Yet a guy like um, Belichick, who's won the Super Bowl, he's had ultimate success. Right. Um, I just sev- think L- L.A. has high standards. And se- won a Super Bowl. Several coaches have moved on because of beefs with management. And right. it's, it's really interesting. I just think that the coaches have had success running the organization, but not too many. So that's why I, I'm fascinated as to why coaches want to have that much control. Because they're coaches. if you were a head coach, you'd want to, you'd want to you'd want to be the general manager yes. and the coach and have player personnel say. If I was a head coach, first of all, I, I don't know if it was my first job. I guess I'd take it, but I would make sure I have an understanding with the general manager. You're supposed to have a bond with that guy, and you guys are supposed to have a, a mutual feelings about players and drafts and, and all that stuff. Otherwise, why the hell would you? Why, why would you stay? Why would you coach? Mm-hmm. And that's that's why the, the article was interesting. Is that these guys have big egos and they clash. The general managers that are there, the presidents, also want to have say into player personnel, and then they clash with their coach. And sometimes it teams that are playing well, that, like Jim Harbaugh, biggest example of a coach who really struggled with getting along with management. He had success there, three straight. Title games, you get last to the Super year, Bowl. The players didn't even want to play for him anymore. He did. There, they that was eight, didn't they? That was part of it. He did yeah. wear on the players and things yeah. like that. But at the same time, they had success there. So it's it's interesting that these coaches need to kind of put their egos aside a little bit and for the greater good of the team. I think kind of defer to a general manager. I think it's good to work together with people for the greater good. I think John Fox should still be in Denver. I don't think he should have left there. I mean, why did you have to disagree with Elway? I'm just I'm just. Uh, 
I'm just interested in in how people work together, and it's, it's interesting <laughs> that coaches with big egos don't know how to don't know how to work uh, with general managers sometimes, and it hurts organizations. I I think John Fox should still be with Denver. I think Harbaugh should still be with the 49ers. It's just that uh, egos get in the way, and it's an interesting topic. Mm. All right, last talking point: Sue's impact with the Dolphins. I'm not talking about it. Biggest impact. Big noise in free agency, getting Sue for a record-breaking deal, signed a six-year, $114 million contract, uh, $60 million in the it. first three years. Oh, my God. Sue, 28, has 239 tackles, 36 sacks the past five seasons. You think he's going to have an instant impact on a defense that was 12th overall um, last year? Sue could be on the Jacksonville Jaguars and have immediate impact. I don't even know what kind of question that is. Of course they're going to have instant success. But I hate Sue, and I hate the Dolphins. So whatever. And a lot of people are... That's my surprise team, by the way. Dolphins? Year. Yeah. A lot of and people are uh, on the Ryan Tannehill train. I'm kind of surprised. I was on there for like the last two years, but he hasn't done anything, so I don't know. Well, this is the last year I'm giving Tannehill, too. Okay. Yeah, I think Susan have immediate impact, and the Dolphins are going to have like a top five defense. Okay. And I want to die because the Lions are not going to have a top five defense. Lions, do? Lions will have what? Top, top 10? 10. Top 10. Probably 10. Right there. And then uh, just for you personally, mm. uh, Sam Bradford's health. Will he play the entire season this oh, year? Yeah. Oh, my God. Are you really going to ask me that question? I'm going to go ahead and be optimistic and say, yeah. Can you play I, this year for I, you? Oh my God. For the Eagles? Please. I hope so. It's a big year for the Eagles, man. Uh, uh, Chip Kelly, another guy with a big ego, has kind of been given the reins to say, hey, He's allowed out. to do whatever he wants. He's allowed. He's sick. He lost his mind. Good job. It doesn't think? make sense. Why would you get rid of LaShawn McCoy and just replace him with DeMarco Murray? It, it's the same thing. I think LaShawn McCoy, they, they, might, they might have had differences. I don't know. I what think the he, hell do I know? I know DeMarco Murray had a way better offensive line in Dallas than he will in Philadelphia. I think so he, I think he was going to have less. His numbers, they're not going to stand out as much. I think he was looking for guys that are going to be more supportive and uh, not question them and, and uh, be able to um, be team players. God, I'll blow Sam Bradford if he stays healthy all year. Oh my goodness gracious, please stay healthy. Stay healthy all year. Absolutely. All right, let's take a break, and then we're going to have what coming up after the break? Uh, length or girth and the Get Laid Bar of the Week. But first, we're going to discuss uh, this piece on Reggie Jackson. Five years, $89 million. Motor City Sports Randy, TrueSportsPodcast.com. For all of you out there, if you're interested in great gear, go to FanaticU.com, the official outfitters of Detroit Sports and the Detroit Sports Podcast. Go to their website, FanaticU.com, for T-shirts, hats, for every team, Michigan, Michigan State. They got great merchandise, great gear, collectibles, go to fanaticu.com and enter promo code DSP. And when you enter promo code DSP, you'll get 15% off your entire order. New Lions gear. If you're a big fan of the Lions like Vinny is or a big fan of the Pistons, Red Wings, you're a fan of Detroit sports, draft day. The Lions were wearing their great hats. Absolutely. You can go purchase them right now at fanaticu.com. Even items that are on clearance, you can get 15% off. 15% off the entire store, fanaticu.com, promo code DSP. And now back to the Motor City Sports Rant with Vinny Stubbs and the Doc. Motor City Sports Rant, Detroit Sports Podcast.com. Uh, John Macaroon, dude. We always have to thank the sponsors uh, Detroit Beard Collective, Fanatic U, Sport Displays, Jersey Mounts. And also, we want to give a special thanks to Detroit Sports Nation. They host our podcast, they are uh, a big supporter of our project. That's why we're able to also put together all these shows is that we got great support from our sponsors and the Detroit Sports Nation. So check out DetroitSportsNation.com, another great website covering. Everything Detroit sports. All right, Vinny. Reggie Jackson. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Very, I, I like Reggie Jackson. He's very consistent. But I read this really, really good piece on this guy. And it comes from Sports Illustrated. And it comes from a gentleman by the name of Will Laws. It was a good piece. Um, he pretty much defecated all over uh, Reggie Jackson. And uh, this is what he said. Are you ready? Only Kevin Love, Marcus Gasol, Kawhi Leonard, and Jimmy Butler were guaranteed more money this summer than Reggie Jackson. Keep in mind that Detroit's newly highest paid player has a worse career, P-E-R, which stands for Player Efficiency Rating. You with me? Yes. Are you listening to me? Uh, he's the highest paid player and has the worst career uh, player efficiency rating than Jeremy Lin. Even though Jackson uh, is contri- he contributes on defense, that's a damning assessment of Jackson's offense ab- uh, offensive ability. Sorry, You simply don't pay someone of that caliber the same amount as John Wall, no matter the salary cap, okay? I liked it. That was a good piece. Yeah, he said, for all those that praise Jackson Earns for his uh, tenacity on the the, uh, the defensive end, opposing teams' offensive ratings were less than 
one point worse with him on the floor last season. I said that in the podcast back in April. You don't remember that? Unless a 25-year-old has some unforeseen breakout in Motown, the Pistons are, will probably rue, R-U-E, paying Jackson like a star. John Macaroon, dude, get off your phone and talk to me. What do you I, think about that? I, I found that really interesting. It was, it was, that's an honest assessment. That's realistic. It's five a, years, $89 million? Five years, $80 million. $16 million. I said, I've seen 89. 80. It's 80. It's 80? That's still way too much. It's it's a lot of money. And he... he this guy better be Jesus Christ. 20, Seriously. In 24 games that I watched, he was very inconsistent. Very inconsistent. He had great games, but there were games when his shot was just off. And when you watch, when you get a, a max contract like that, you're, you're expected to deliver right away. And, and I don't know if he's going to live up to that contract. And Stan Van Gundy believes in him. So with the preseason, with uh, I trust with training camp, I just think that was a lot of money. It's too much money. Yeah, and what's that say for Brandon Jennings? Is he done? Is he going to be a six guy in Detroit? Or are they going to shake him? I think they're going to showcase him to try to get something oh, for him. Oh, well, there you go. But uh, but uh, a guy like Reggie Jackson is going to be. Um, it's going to be very important that he that he creates his own shot, that he that he gets the offense, um, that he gets the team into the flow of the offense quickly, and that he's a guy that is very. He has to watch his shots. Guys like that, the guys that are volume shooters, they can go off sometimes. Volume shooters. Yeah, the guys that need a lot of shots. He needs a lot of shots. He wants the ball in his hands. I personally am a fan of uh, pass-first point guards. That's me personally. But right now in the NBA, you see it all over. you got guys that can shoot and put the ball in, in the basket. And Reggie Jackson is going to want to score 20, 25 points a game. But is he going to get you 10 assists? Because there were games last season where he the, the team as a whole didn't, do, didn't get a lot of assists. And KCP is going to need to get into rhythm. He's going to want to involve and, uh, Andre Drummond. And, you know, how, how Stanley Johnson going to react? Oh, I, I love Stanley Johnson. Are you watching him in the summer league? He did good. So it's going to be important that he's going to be, have to facilitate the offense and, and you know, when his shot's off, not continue to throw up bad threes. Because, man, you, you remember when Josh Smith was throwing up threes after three and was missing. Long it was, twos? It was awful. Oh, my God. I wanted to commit suicide. I can't believe I, I watched that. Why'd you let me watch them? <sighs> it's all your fault. Yeah. So, no, I do believe, though, I do believe it's going to be a little bit challenging at first, the first maybe 10, 15 games, but then he'll get into rhythm and he'll have a really good season the first season and live up to that $16 I so. million. Dollar. I hope so, too. I think he's the Pistons' Matt Stafford. Very good at times and very awful at times. Mm. Consistency. That, uh, and that gets you 80. Fix that. You're only 25 years old. Yeah, so. that gets you 80 million in the NBA, right? I guess so. Isn't John, that crazy? John Wall was absolutely well within his right to say, damn, I'm making as much as uh, Reggie Jackson. Isn't that insane? Are you serious? Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's nuts. I think the Pistons will be a six seed this year. With that being said, it's time for length or girth. Length or girth? Uh, macaroon, dude. Question number one, the Tigers, 47 and 49. Um, Brad Osmus is the Antichrist, and I don't want to live anymore. Length or girth? Uh, Tigers under 500. John. Length. Yeah. I think that... The Tigers are a team that struggles consistently on several aspects of the game, yep. and they don't. They lack confidence. They lack a good manager in game, <gasps> and the bullpen is atrocious. Oh, so it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. The bullpen is atrocious. So this will continue. You remember now, this is still July. In August, we got series versus uh, Kansas City and Houston. They could embarrass us. It's teetering, they would say. Um, this gonna, could bottom out yeah. quickly. I'm going to go length, and it's going to bottom out. It's going to get really ugly. They might go like 20 games under 500. It's going to bottom out, and it's going to look really bad. It's really bad, Jason. John, look at me. I almost called you Jason because you're lengthy and girthy, and you got a big hog between your legs. <laughs> Question number two, Dave Dombrowski, general manager in Detroit, length or girth? Girth. He is going to oh, probably take offense to the fact die. that he wasn't given a contract. He was a... <sighs> He's probably looking at this as a big dis uh, sign of disrespect oh, that he didn't shit, get a contract sick. and he's going to be courted. And I do think that for everybody, everybody involved, I don't think it's because he did a bad job. It's because it's time for a, a change of scenery and his time in Detroit will be over when oh, this season is done. Shit, just just based on the fact that this team, this team had such big expectations with the big payroll and they did not deliver the goods. <sighs> girth. I want to go girth too. It's been fun. Thanks for the memories and not winning the World Series. See ya. Wow. Unbelievable. Question number three. On length or girth, will Reggie Jackson live up to his contract? Five years. $80 million. I thought it was 89 I'm sorry. Um, hung like an infant for saying that. Uh, will Reggie Jackson live up to his contract, dude? Length or girth? Seriously, go ahead. Length. It'll be a struggle early on. 
But I do believe that he's a point guard that will learn under SVG. SVG is a very talented head coach. He is the president and head coach of the Pistons, and he's going to do everything in his power to surround Reggie Jackson with a good team. Yes. And the offensive system is going to be yes. it's going to allow him to have open shots. Yes. And he's going to nail them. Bam. Absolutely. Healthy release. I'm going to go length, too. I think they're going to be the sixth seed in the East this year, and they might win, like, one playoff game. I'm not saying they're going to win a series. I'm saying they're going to win one playoff game. That does it for length of Earth. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And it's time for the Get Laid Bar of the Week. The Get Laid Bar of the Week, Deluxe Lounge, 350 Monroe Avenue, downtown Detroit. The Deluxe Lounge is in the Greektown neighborhood, conveniently located near fine and casual dining establishments. With Ford Field, Comerica Park, and Greektown Casino in walking distance. That doesn't matter, your penis is due. Four to one woman to stud ratio with shit on my chest. Complimentary shuttle to all stadiums, concerts, and sporting events. Show your confidence and your wiener. Who's the boss? And get laid, please. Uh, Rock of the D since 2004. Motor City Sports Rant. Detroit Sports Podcast.com. Vinny Stubbs back with his girlfriend. It was a good podcast, brother. Thank you, man. I tried my hardest. It was, uh, it was, it was good. Live, so it was good. Really care. T- Tigers made you mad. What's, what's going to make you happy this week in sports? Uh, hmm. Let me see. If Sue tears his ACL and he's out for the year, to be honest with you. Sue getting hurt. <laughs> yeah. Sue getting hurt. And what uh, if what if you get a major announcement that Price has been been traded for a good couple prospects? I'm happy and pissed at the same time. I don't want to talk about the Tigers anymore. I, I, I truly am pissed off about this. Okay, I so really am. It sucks. So, it's over. What are we going to do? It's over. Maybe it's time to now. Okay. Here's what we'll do. Go on Brazzers uh, and no, go home. No, we'll say on the Motor City Sports Rant, it's time to yeah. look at um the future prospects. What's in the we organization? don't have any. Listen. You still got to talk about who's there. Bruce Fields. Uh, who's Jeffrey Marte? And there was another guy on there that I seen yesterday. I don't even remember his name. That's what I'm saying. I almost jumped off of Greetown last night. Take this week to look at who's in the minors, who's out there that could be a Come trade on. bait, and let's start talking about the solutions. And we, we already know the problems. We've already dissected it enough. Yep. Let's us now fix the problem with the Tigers and look at uh, what are we going to do to get this team back into the playoffs and back into World Series contention. Uh, Motor City Sports Rant, DetroitSportsPodcast.com. See ya. Okay, nice idiot. Uh, f*** you. Bye-bye. Good day, sir. I said good day. All right. Take care now. Bye bye then. Hey, loser. <laughs>